Now we're going to talk Manchester United in a moment, but Gab, have you got a good lawyer? I've got a good lawyer. We've we need been, one, we've don't been, we? We've been threatened. Can you believe it? Or the chunk. The chunk. <laughs> He's threatened us. <laughs> what have we done wrong? <laughs> Have we got another song to play? Uh, well, Ed's trying to find it, but look, he's bottling it as well. Ollie's, he's threatened Ollie. Oh, he's uh, he's not an Ed's, he's threatened Ed's, the producer, and now yeah, the producer won't play the song. A couple of wusses, you are. A couple of wusses, Honestly. Yeah. Ollie, mall's off at you, are, mate. Right, back to the football then. We'll finish off with it. Now, another game, another lead thrown away by Manchester United. Mason Mount has done it! Can you believe it? In the 97th minute, and it's stolen three points. Got a goal! What a magnificent Manchester United goal! The comeback is complete. Manchester United 2, Liverpool 1. Take a bow, Kobe Mainu. Downstairs. Aya is there to equalise. Christopher Aya in the 99th minute may have rescued a point. For Brentford, it's Cole Palmer! He's done it! A hat trick! Chelsea win! 4 3! Here comes Salah into the bottom corner. Another huge goal for Liverpool. It's Manchester United 2, Liverpool 2. Yeah, quite incredible. In the space of one week, Manchester United took the lead in the 96th minute against Brentford and only picked up a point. Led Chelsea 3-1 in the 99th minute. Oh. Went on to lose that game and were 2-1 ahead against Liverpool yesterday. Also going on to pick up just one point. All in all, two points from those games. John is now looking back and another lead thrown away as a member of the 99 treble winning side. A very good morning to our great goalkeeper, Peter Schmeichel. Peter, morning. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Alan. Good morning. Morning, Gabby. How are you doing? Very well. Uh, God, this race now for the top is fantastic, Peter. And uh, Arsenal and Man City are thanking the lucky stars for United, whereas Jürgen must be kicking himself. Two points drop, surely, Peter. Yeah, I, I think that's that's probably the way to put it. Uh, you think about the number of shots, the number of, uh, of, of chances they had in that game. Uh, and couldn't take advantage of that. Um, so, yes. I think he said as much after the game as well. Yeah. Uh, well, I know he, he put it in a different way. He said it wasn't two points dropped. It was 1.1. 1. 1, but but just having just saying that, kind of, it felt like he meant the opposite. Peter, why do you think, um, I asked Phil Thompson earlier on the programme, why do you think we're getting so many late goals? Is it just that we're playing so many minutes extra time now you know sometimes as many as 10 11 is that the problem is fatigue setting in or is there not enough leaders out there we keep a clean sheet we <laughs> hold on to this what what what's the cause Pete? yeah I, I think that's that definitely plays into it that you you know we've got we had games uh last weekend where you had 18 minutes added on to the to the total game i mean the Today, training is it, it, it's so scientific. It's you know, it's to the point. They look at numbers, and you have to reach certain numbers. and And I don't think there's there's been uh, uh, there's been much investigation into adding 80, uh, 18 minutes to so you know to ninety. So I think that plays a really really big part in that. I also think because I, I'm going to take injuries. I mean, the number of injuries that we've seen this season. I'm going to take that into it as well. Yeah. I think that is still so. So the added on minutes plus, I still think, you know, the 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 aftermath of a of a World Cup in the middle of the season, I think that still plays into it. Um, and I mean, I I played in the team. We, uh, you know, a very big part of our existence was to you know wear teams down and then get to sort of 88, 89, and then into the nineties. And then you, you you score there when they're tired and the concentration levels are low. So uh, I, I kind of know firsthand how how that works out. And yes, you know you you definitely don't have the same level of concentration that time in the game than uh, than early on. Peter, when I see um, Man- ex Manchester United players um, doing punditry and having their comments on this team, you know you all speak. Um, that you're not happy with how it is at the moment because you played in teams where you know you're winning league titles, you're winning Champions Leagues, you're fighting for titles. How can you be happy with being 22 points behind the leaders? You know it's too far of a gap 
for a club like Manchester United, isn't it? It is. I mean, of course, we we still consider ourselves the biggest club in the world, the most popular club in the world. And uh, what we are not doing at the moment is backing that up with results. Uh, it's it's. I mean, obviously, last year we won the League Cup and we finished third in the league. Uh, it it was uh, it was okay. I was a little bit uh, unhappy with uh, the narrative around it that it was brilliant because it's mm. not. And, and of course, we lost the FA Cup final. Uh, this time, there's a chance, still a chance to win the FA Cup final. And I'm afraid that if we do that, uh, it's gonna, you know, in a way send the, the the wrong narrative. The the thing about I'm 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 reluctant to to go down the road of saying when I played it was like this and in the in the past it was like this because I don't think that carries any value. I think you have to be more constructive when you talk about mm. uh, things like that. What 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 really really bothers me more than anything with with uh, this current Manchester United team is that there are too many players in the team that doesn't work hard enough. Mm. If if playing isn't, you know, if it's not happening for you, it and, and that comes to all of us. You know, we have games, yeah. yeah, we have games where, you know, it's not working. Uh, but, we, you know, what we're trying to do is not coming off and we're making mistakes and all of that. But one thing we can always do, and we know that as former footballers, all of us, one thing we can always do is to work hard and work for the team and make sure that if it's not our day, you know, somebody else might have the day and we can set that person up. Yeah. And I see too much, <clears throat> too much of that not happening in this team. Uh, and that, that, that is a little bit sad. Um, we, we all, I mean, I know obviously a lot of players, former players are talking about uh, the culture's not there, you know, it, you know, the, the standards are down and, and, and it is, but, it's not just the players. I mean, the, the club's been let down right from the top for many, many years. And, you know, I'm, I, I want to see, I want to look at the positive side of this. We've got, we've got Jim Ratcliffe in now. Uh, he's, he's very enthusiastic about, you know, you know starting up the process and um, things are going to change and things will change. It has to change. Uh, and that's an opportunity that's come in from left side, if you like. It was an opportunity that we didn't see coming a year ago, and we te- we have to take full advantage of that. Yeah, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that can be the catalyst to um, to to changing up the fortunes of Manchester United. So Jim's seen some weird games, hasn't he? You know, you sat next to him, I think, at Stamford Bridge, and yeah. then the game yesterday. You know, what is he thinking? He's thinking, crikey, bang mm. goes a quiet summer for him. <laughs> I, I think he already knew that. <laughs> I, I think that that was already once he he started the whole process of of of, of trying to buy the twenty seven percent. I think he already knew that his time was allocated for for, for many years in in the future with uh, have, uh, working with Man United. I think I think he looks at at the uh, at, at, as at it as a challenge, a really really interesting challenge for him. Yeah. Obviously, he, he's a big fan. It's it was. Uh, Quite interesting to sit next to him and, and 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 speak to him and listen to how he reacts to what happens on the pitch. He's a fan. Yeah, I think that is really, I think that's really important to underline that we now have somebody who actually lives the Manchester United uh, idea and is not in there to make money or not in there yeah. to to have you know uh, a, a, a a an asset which can create other business. Uh, businesses around, uh, so, so he he's a fan. I, he 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 has, he's got the same frustrations as uh, as I think most people have, most Man United fans, and he sees it. And of course, yeah. he's got Dave Brailsford uh, next to him, who is very experienced in in creating sports teams, and uh, they're trying to build this team around you know the sporting department. Uh, it's taking time, of course. Things are always going to take time, and if yeah. you know changes will have. You need time to take it, take full effect. But they're working on it, and for me, it's positive. It, it's it's something is happening now, and and uh, you know the club is working towards something which is better than what it is now. Sure, Peter. One last one. You played in front of some or behind some great defenders. I'm just wondering who has the edge in this this title race. It, would it be Arsenal? Would it be City? Or would it be the likes of Gabriel? You know, uh, 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 the Saliba. Arsenal, Saliba, who's been fantastic. Yeah. You know, who, who's just got the edge, do you think? I think when you look at defences, I think 
Man City and Arsenal are very equal. I think you know the options uh, that uh, that that Pep has got in in you know his back line. He's got some really really good players there. They're very experienced. Seven games seems to be not very much for people who's never been in this type of of, of race. It it uh, it kind of seems oh we're nearly there, but seven games it's twenty one points. It's you know it's a lot. It's a long way. You have to, you know, you have to really, really focus and concentrate. And at the moment, yes, everyone's pointing to Arsenal. Um, Arsenal is going to have a few, a few challenges coming up. One of them is Bayern Munich. Uh, one thing is when you, when you, when you're playing Premier League and you, you kind of on a roll. It's a way, one way of playing in the Premier League. It's another way of playing in the Champions League. Now. These Bayern games can play a very big part in this uh, in this running. They're not too experienced in this, and we saw when they played Porto, they needed penalties sure. to get through to that. And the first game in Porto came off a five nil win. You know, five different goal scorers, and they went to Porto and lost one nil. Set out to do some of the same as they've done in the Premier League, but you're just up against different you know opponents, different tactics different way of approaching games. And I think when you're in this type of race, you have to keep the momentum and those Bayern games. I look at them, if they can get through them, if they get through Bayern, I think they'll win the Premier League. Wow, um, wow. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Peter, I appreciate your time. Peter. Thank you. Enjoy Thank you. the rest Thanks. of the season. Thank Take you, care. Peter. Thank and you. Man. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.